Hello friends, Teletubbies gave me childhood trauma here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about the three most OP heroes in patch 7.29. Number one, Huskar. With the drop of 7.29, Huskar's win rate shot up by 7%, making him the single highest win rate hero in the entire game. Why is Huskar OP? Well, for one, Inner Fire is a really, really good ability. Back in 7.27b, the knockback distance of this ability was reduced from 550 to 400, meaning that Huskar and his team can actually attack the units that are affected by this ability. Then, in 7.29, the knockback duration was increased from 0.6 to 1 second, making this ability a genuinely effective AoE disable. And, as of 7.29, the Ags Shard now lets you cast this ability while disabled, and also removes the cast point, meaning that the classic counter of just stunning and bursting Huskar in the duration of a stun just isn't realistic anymore. So, to sum it all up, an Ag Shard Inner Fire does 310 AoE damage, knocks back for 1 second, disarms for 4 seconds, applies a 40% move speed slow, reduces healing and regen by 50%, has 50% spell uptime, has no cast point, and is castable while disabled. Even if the rest of Huskar was complete dog shit, there is no way that this ability wouldn't be considered broken. It does way too much. A second reason that Huskar is OP is that his Ag Scepter is extremely good. In 7.23, his Ags was reworked such that Life Break taunts the enemy target for 3 seconds. At first glance, this might look like Huskar effectively has a 12 second cooldown, long range, damage dealing, dual ability like Legion Commander, but it's actually a lot better in a lot of ways. For one, Huskar is spell immune while jumping, so you're basically Legion Commander, but you don't need a Blink Dagger. And second, Huskar has a 4 second AoE disarm. So, sure, you're dueling someone, but you can also disarm them as well as their friends. So really, it's just a low cooldown, BKB piercing, nuking disable. A third reason that Huskar is incredibly strong is that his stats have been creeping up for many patches. For instance, his strength gain was slowly increased from 2.7 to 3.4, Berserker's Blood attack speed has been increased in the lower levels, Burning Spear HP cost has been reduced, and his Agi gain went from 1.4 to 1.8. It's also worth noting that Huskar's most core item, the Armlet of Morgan Freeman, was buffed in 7.29 to grant more armor and cost less HP per second, for no extra cost. How do you play Huskar? 1. Pick Huskar in the middle lane position and start with Bracer plus Branch. 2. Generally max Spears first, going for an early point in Q and taking extra points in your E if you need more HP regen in a harass heavy lane. 3. In lane, hit the enemy with Spears when you aren't CSing and secure ranged creeps with your Q if they are a problem to get with right clicks. 4. Rush Armlet, then once you have it, start pushing out your lane and taking Ancient Creeps. 5. Build Phase Boots into Sanjin Yasha then Ags. If they have some heavy physical guy like Ursa or Pie, value a Halberd instead of S and Y. If they have lots of magical damage, then throw an early BKB in there. 6. Eventually, you want the enemy team to forget that you exist, then you go solo Roche with a smoke or by just walking in when they're somewhere else. 7. With this Aegis, run at every tower until you die. Then, do the same thing with every subsequent Roshan kill until you win the game because you are an OP hero that can solo Roche and they can't. Number 2. Phantom Lancer Phantom Lancer is currently the second most picked carry in pro level pubs with an insane 55% win rate. Why is PLOP? Well, unlike Huskar, it's just one reason honestly. His Ag Shard was good before, and now it's even better. I hate to say it guys, but BSJ was right, and everyone else was left. Maybe he didn't have it exactly figured out, but he was convinced that the Ag Shard on PL was the way to play him in the last patch. In 7.28, the Ag Shard was added to the game, buffing Spirit Lance so that the Illusion does 20% more damage and causing the projectile to bounce once. Also in 7.28, the negative 1 second Spirit Lance cooldown talent became a negative 2 second one. 
Then, in the A patch, the Spirit Lance Illusion damage got a 10% buff, making it do a total of 50% of PL's damage. Then, in the B patch, the cast range of Shard Spirit Lance was increased by 200. And finally, in 7.29, even though this build was already really good, the Illusion damage was buffed again, and this time by 20% and the CDR talent was changed from negative 2 seconds to negative 3 seconds. So, this means that PL can have 4 super-powered illusions running around, dealing a total of 280% of his main hero's damage without even entering the fight. This is one of those builds that I'm fairly certain won't be in the game for very long, because the way you play it isn't really fun for either party, you just win if you're the PL. If you're PL, you just avoid hard committing to fights, and you will eventually win them by changing chipping away at the enemy team, and if you're PL's teammates, you just exist to distract the enemies while your PL chips away at them. If you're PL's enemies and you don't start the fight by killing the PL, within 3 seconds, your supports will be dead. Within 6 seconds, your offlaner and mid will be dead. Within 9 seconds, your entire team will be dead and PL will be hitting your buildings with a heart. How do you play PL? 1. Pick PL in the carry position and start with a Quelling Blade, Wraith Band components, and a bit of basic health regen. 2. Go for a 1-1-4 skill build with an extra point in Q if you can destroy the lane and get kills. 3. In lane, use Phantom Rush off cooldown to harass and CS, and use your Lance for ranged creeps if they are contested. 4. Build Wraith Band into treads, then jungle and push lanes, farming relatively safely until you have Diffusal Blade. It's important to note that before Diffusal, you don't really want to fight, but PL is actually really good at shoving lanes and tanking creeps, so it's often a great play to push lanes just to make the enemy team waste their time to show up and deal with you. 5. Once you have Diffusal, it's go time. Run at towers and enemies and try to fight like a madman. In the fight, go for the squishy backliners first. 6. After Diffusal, build into Manta, Heart, Scotty, grabbing the Ag Shard as soon as humanly possible. If you're winning fights, keep fighting non-stop. If you lose a fight, get your next item and try again. 7. Once you have the Ag Shard, remember that you never have to commit to a fight. You can always poke away until the enemy team is half dead, then go in. 8. Once you have Heart and Aegis, basically no heroes in Dota can kill you twice. So, run at their towers and siege while poking them with Lance until you win. Number 3. Grimstroke. Grimstroke is currently the second most picked hero in pro-level pubs with a 53% win rate. Which may not seem that impressive at first glance, but this hero has consistently had a close to 40% win rate since its inception, because it mostly requires you to combo with teammates. Why is Grimstroke OP? Well, for one, his level 10 talents are insanely overtuned. As of 7.29, the left talent reduces Inkswell's cooldown by 6 seconds, which makes what is arguably Grimstroke's best ability have only 2 seconds of downtime. This, paired with the fact that his silence can chain forever, makes it feel like Grimstroke has infinite disable and nuke potential. The right talent, also as of 7.29, makes Phantom's Embrace do 50 more DPS, on top of the extra 10 damage per second that this ability received in 7.29. This makes the total potential damage of this ability to come out to 810 at level 10. And of course, this can be refreshed infinitely if they don't kill the spirit. People are playing Grimstroke as mostly a 4 and a 5, and don't get me wrong, it looks amazing. But with the massive damage output that you can do at level 10, I definitely foresee this hero trending again as a mid laner very soon. The second reason Grimstroke is OP is that his shard is just overpowered. In 7.29, the shard was changed to cause Inkswell to deal 50% more damage, which equates to 787 total damage at max level. On top of this, the target heals for 50% of the damage that Inkswell deals which equates to about 400 potential healing per unit that Inkswell hits. Then, as if that wasn't enough, Inkswell popping strong dispels the target that it was cast on, which is obscenely good because the Inkswell target literally runs into the middle of team fights. So, essentially, some guy runs in, moving incredibly quickly, dealing shitloads of damage, healing himself for 1000 HP, strong dispelling himself, then stunning you for 4 seconds, then, with the new talent, does it again 2 seconds later. Once again, because of shards, talents, and random buffs, we have an ability that does about 50 different things extremely well which usually in Dota that results in a hero being overpowered. How do you play Grimstroke? 
1. Pick Grimstroke as a 5, 4, 3, or 2 position, and start with some Null Talisman components and some basic HP regen. In a side lane, build Basilius as soon as possible. 2. Spam your Q to secure range creeps and harass enemies. Then get a level advantage by pulling creeps. 3. With your level advantage, use your Inkswell to get kills if possible. 4. Level Q and E together, going for a value-pointed silence when you need it for fights. 5. Build Veil into Aether Lens into Ag Shard. 6. If your team doesn't want to fight, stand in a dangerous side lane and make space by pushing waves. 7. If your team does want to fight, then smoke and run at enemies, killing them with your ult plus Inkswell. 8. Go for all of the Inkswell talents and make your cores superhuman in every single team fight. Eventually, you can build into Sheep for Disable, Ethereal Blade plus Dagon for damage, or Ags if there is a great hero to make illusions of on the enemy team. Grimstroke is one of the best late-game scaling cores in the game, so chances are, if you get there, you'll probably win a teamfight, then win the game. Anyway, that's it for this video. Shoutouts to this guy that is subscribed to me and left a comment on my previous video. He will be receiving a Dragon Claw hook if he hasn't already by the time that you watch this video, uh, because I've decided to do the Mr. Beast strat of just doing random shit for my subscribers, Anyway, I appreciate you guys a lot, and I hope to see you in another video.